big man! Oh, it's pretty! It's so, so pretty! The league's top two teams continue to roll. Can anyone stop San Diego and Florida? And the MASL announces the return of another team for next season to the Lone Star State. This is MASL Primetime. What's up, everyone? I'm Alex Bastrovansky. It is so awesome to have you on board for this week's program. And there were some massive games that went down last week. And maybe none were quite as intriguing as Chihuahua in San Diego. Now, since losing its first seven games this season, the Savage have been one of the hottest teams in the league, having won seven straight contests Heading into this one, they were looking to keep the hot play going on the road in San Diego. The Savage were hot, but San Diego hadn't lost a single game in regulation time all season, and they hit first. How can you tell? This is going to be a fun game. It's Giles. Giles scores! The quick restart, and the captain has a point in all 15 games he's played this year. Yeah, Charles has been incredible. He makes it one nothing, but the Savage equalized late in the quarter. Uriel Zuart wins the one-on-one -on -one battle. He pokes it home to even it up. San Diego gets the only goal of the second quarter. Cesar Cerda absolutely crushing that offering into the netting, and the blue and gold go up 2-1. Now, the Savage continued to stick with them, though, uh, for the moment. Anyway, Hugo Puentes, one of the headers of the year here. That is from a very tough angle. Nice goal, and it's a 2-2 game. Until this happens, Leo de Oliveira to Mr. Childs, and that would prove to be the game winner as the Sockers get pushed for a while, but ultimately pull away. 6-2, final score. Now, San Diego's the best in the West. The beast of the East is Florida. They were in Milwaukee. We pick it up in the fourth quarter. Wave leading 6-5, make it 7-5. IB26, Ian Bennett absolutely murders that offering. Milwaukee up by two. That lead did not last. Josh Sandoval uh, puts it home. Matt Perella doesn't see a thing until it's too late. It's a one-goal game. With things tied up at seven, Juan Oliveira breaking bottles. He goes top shelf, and the wave go back on top. Cue the comeback, though. Zach Raggett playing the boards perfectly, and he knots things up once again. Then with just a buck 33 remaining, Kyle Williams, the sweet moves, the finish. And that's the only time the Tropics led all game long. It was the only lead that mattered because that's how it finished up. 9-8 Tropics. The final, okay, Dallas, Kansas City playing a home and home last weekend. Here is game number one. Luis Morales continuing to shred the opposition, the super rookie. Uh, puts Dallas on top early. They would make it to Gustavo Piedra to a wide open Philippe de Souza. 2 nothing. Sidekicks and then KC woke up. Rian Marquez, Johnny on the spot. He deposits the header and the Dallas lead is cut to just one. A buck oh eight later. Huge save by Esteban Vasquez there, but Lucas Souza sneaks in, puts home the second chance. It's all tied up 2 2. Now, with the score 3 3, let's see ya. That Sani gives the Comets a lead they would never again relinquish. Part of a five goal run. Uh, just 35 seconds later, Ali Sodal hits Richard Sherman. 5 3 there. They would blow this one wide open and take it a big time. 13 6. The final score there. Okay, news. Big news to tell you about the Mesquite Outlaws are returning to the MASL. The Outlaws. Played one season in the league back in 2019-20 and then went dormant during the COVID-shortened season last year, but they are back, baby. They will be coached by arena soccer legend Tattoo and they will once again vie for supremacy in the Dallas market with the sidekicks. Yeah, Alex, you know, we're very happy to have Mesquite back in the league. Obviously, they're coached by one of the legends of indoor soccer with Tattoo. It's going to help scheduling. It's going to help the competitiveness within maybe the central division. We don't know exactly what division. It's great to have them back. All right, the players of the month for February were announced. Jorge Rios of Chihuahua is your offensive 
player for the month, then yeah, he was just unstoppable. 14 points in February, 10 goals, 4 assists as uh, Chihuahua was on a 7-game winning streak there for a bit. And your defensive player for February, Boris Pardo of the San Diego Soccer's uh, ridiculous stats, 6-0, 54 saves in the month of February as the Soccers are just looking like they might be unstoppable this year leading the West and scoring leaders right now. Ian Bennett continuing to lead the way, 44 points, followed by Victor Pereiras, uh, Mohamed Ndi, Frank Taiyu, and Brandon Escoto to round out your top five. Welcome back to MASL Primetime, everybody. So just when we thought we were getting a read on the West Division, the Tacoma Stars come along and muddy the picture even more. So yes, San Diego is the runaway leader in the West right now, but Chihuahua and Ontario are legit powers in their own right, while the Stars have struggled at times this season and sat last in the division. But last weekend... Against the Ontario Fury, they serve notice once again. There are no soft touches in the West this season. The Stars had two games against the Fury last weekend, and they strike first in this one. Here. Stars power play out there. Pereira, Caceres. The shot from Rafael Cox and a goal! Rafael Cox, the opener for Tacoma, and they were all over them in the first quarter. Nick Pereira slides it to Alex Caceres. He rips the twine and makes it two zip. The onslaught continues. Jamil Cox turning on the Jets, outraces his man, finds daylight, and it's 3 0 for Tacoma. With time winding down in the second quarter, Pereira again playing the setup man for Rafael, and he makes it 4 0. And yeah, Tacoma opening some eyes. The Stars cruise in this one, taking it 7-2. Uh, it was a different story in the rematch, though. Ontario came to play in this one. Robert Palmer gets the party started for the Fury right there. Soon after, Jorge De Leon, the smooth spinorama. Nothing Danny Waltman can do about that perfection. 2-0 Ontario. Just 40 seconds after that, Abdul Mansoureh, way too much time and space. He makes no mistake, and the Fury cruising right along. They were up three zip, and then Frank Taillou uh, makes it four with this absolute beauty. Ontario jumped out to a 9-0 lead, 9-0, and they never looked back. That score is actually flattering to the Stars. Ontario was in full control the entire way. Florida looking to keep the hot play going in St. Louis. Already up 2-0 uh, in this one. Zach Reggett makes it 3-4 FLA in the second half. The ambush cut into that lead though. Lucas Almeida, there was some mustard on that shot. And yeah, definitely worthy of a shoe shine. They continue to chip away. Robbie Cristo smashing home the rebounds and the ambush pulled to within a single tally. But the Tropics were ultimately too much. Reggett, his second of the day for Florida right there. That restored the two goal lead and they would pull away in the end. 9-5, the final score for the boys from the Sunshine State. Now the ambush had more success against Milwaukee. First quarter, JT Thomas making it one zip for St. Lou. The wave would tie it though. Stuart Grable bangs it in to even things up, 1-1. And then uh, four minutes later, Javier Steinwasher gives the wave its first lead of the day, 2-1 after one. Second quarter, Pepe Junquero with the golazo. How good was this shot? Tony Wall's expression right there says it all. Oh. Dirty, dirty shot, 2-2. Two, two. Second half, tied 5-5. Five, five. Uh, when Walls gives the ambush a lead, they would never relinquish. It was tight all the way to the finish line, but St. Louis comes out on top, 9-8 in this one. Okay, the KC-Dallas rematch back in Dallas now. 
see if he can make something of it. Morales with a shot and the score! Luis Morales, the bandit, makes it even. Dallas Psychics 2-2. Two to two. Morales, wow. So it was 2-2. Two two. Back comes KC though. Rian Marquez heads it into the open cage. Dallas rang up six straight goals after that though. Eric Macias squaring the affair right there and then keeper Nicolau Neto gets caught in no man's land using his hands outside the box not to not to so it's a penalty Morales takes it he does not miss those 4-3 big D and they would cruise the rest of the way so the sidekicks get their revenge they win the second half of the home and home 8-3 some more news it was alumni day in San Diego during halftime of the soccer's game against Chihuahua, all the former greats were honored and they had a great game featuring dozens of former soccer's greats, including Hall of Famers Kevin Crow, Brian Quinn, Paul Wright, and Zoltan Toth. Uh, just a great organization. One more note, MASL Commissioner Keith Tozer recently inducted into the Cincinnati Indoor Soccer Hall of Fame. He was the first ever picked by the Cincinnati Kids and went on to have an illustrious career. He is, of course, the all-time coaching wins leader in the history of indoor pro soccer. Yeah, I'm very excited and honored. Um, you know, it's where I started my indoor career. It really gave me a great foundation on how to be a professional. So again, a big thank you to the committee. Congrats, Keith. And I thought we should put up an old pic of him side by side with the current MASL mustache champion, Andrew Hoxie. I think Keith has a bit more volume Andrew, maybe a bit more flair. Damn fine facial hair though, boys. Had an overload aside. Or, or Shot, that. Go! <laughs> and Victor Perez tees it up. Doesn't even look to pass. Top right corner, two on the night for the captain. Oh yeah, the Florida Tropics have just been unreal this season. And that man, Victor Pereiras, has been leading them. In fact, he is one of the leading scorers in the entire Major Arena Soccer League. And he joins us now for a chat. Victor, how you doing? Uh, everything good. Everything great after this weekend on the road. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you guys. Uh, thank you, Alex, for the invitation and be here with the prime time. Well, it's great to have you on the show, man. And uh, let's just start with the two big games you guys had last weekend. Showdowns against Central Division teams in uh, the Milwaukee Wave and the St. Louis Ambush. Just talk about the two games and the way you feel the boys played last weekend. Uh, let's talk about the first, these last two games, right? Uh, I think the boys responded very well. I'm really proud of them. Two tough teams, Milwaukee showed up on Saturday playing very well, it was a tough game, it was right on the line. In the last minute we were able to score the last goal with Kyle, which was brilliant. Uh, and then St. Louis as well, a great team, the great atmosphere. And the season's been good so far, I think we, we on a, we're on track and we want to keep going that way. So Victor, last season was uh, fantastic, the regular season anyway, you guys finished on top of the league table. Uh, come playoff time, though, you got knocked out in the semifinals. When I talked to Coach Clay Roberts earlier in the season, he mentioned it was definitely some extra motivation for him. Has it been the same for you guys, too? Has it been extra motivation for the players this season? Oh, definitely. you got to use everything you got, right? So uh, I think losing those games to San Diego was a bit harsh on us, but it's always when we have to, to play a tough game again, we... We gotta learn from that. We're gonna have a bit more experience on that, on those games, and I hope we can use it in our advantage. Victor, I wanted to get a comment from you on Drew Ruggles, uh, who's been, of course, rock solid for you guys this season, but he's averaging nearly two points per game as a defender. Uh, incredible. Talk about Drew and his performance so far this year. Well, we're very fortunate to have Drew on the team. Uh, everybody knows how good he is of. Uh, a defender, defender and um, he's able to score he's able to get forward and create the place for us so it's not ours on the on the forwards or on the midfielders and he's a defender that can get forward and score some points in the sets finally one more thing victor uh we talked about this on the show last week but the date that everyone should have set aside looking forward to is march 31st where you guys who are top dogs in the east 
will be facing the number one team in the West, the San Diego Sockers, a true clash of the Titans. Is this something the team's been talking about at all and are looking forward to? Yeah, we have this mentality to go game by game, but for sure, San Diego is a game that we're looking ahead, ahead to play. Um, we know they have a good team, actually a very good team. I respect them a lot. You know it's going to be a tough game and we got to be ready. And I know the whole league is expecting that game to be a big one. So we got we to gotta be able to put the show too. So. Okay, Victor, unfortunately, that is all the time we've got for this segment. But uh, listen, once again, thank you so much for taking the time to come on today. Keep up the great work down there in Florida and uh, stay healthy. We'll chat soon. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me. Thank you, AMSL. Um, I'm glad to be a part of it, of it and keep, keep doing the job. I love the prime time. Welcome back to MASL Primetime, everyone. So after a brutal stretch of games that saw them lose eight straight contests, there's been a glimmer of hope recently that Utica may just be turning things around. Heading into last weekend, the Blues had split their last two games, and on Sunday they faced a squad that's had its own share of problems this season, the Harrisburg Heat, who had dropped nine straight contests. City had actually won two of its last four heading into this one, and they draw first blood. Tavernisi to Roberts. Roberts working against Francis, leaks through the pass, they score! Joey Tavernisi making it one nothing. It would be two before Robert Williamson gets Harrisburg on the board right there. In the second, they even it up. Dom Francis to Malcolm Harris. He finishes in style, and it was a 2-2 game, and then the Heat take the lead. Alejandro Chavez uh, right there, and an upset was brewing, but Utica would take it back in the final quarter. Nate Bordeaux to Joey Tavernes. He all knotted up at three apiece, and then with just a minute left, Bo Yelovac playing hero for City. That is the game-winning goal. And uh, Utica has now won three of its last five games. Don't count them out down the stretch, especially if they can get Moises Gonzalez back in the lineup. Harrisburg was in Baltimore on Friday night, and Lucas Roque had that eye of the tiger, and that was bad news for the Heat. William Van Zella. Roque with a spin and a shot and a goal! Well, there you go, Paul. Aroke makes it one zip just 29 seconds in. Moments later, Jamie Thomas rips the mesh. And 2-0, trailing by four. The Heat get on the board finally. Alejandro Chavez finds the back of the net. 4-1, Baltimore, but the blast would just pull away in the second half. Ibrahim Keita, the perfect feed for Adriano Dos Santos. Baltimore ultimately takes this one. 9-4 and Lucas Roque said afterwards they were intent on getting off to a quick start and it paid off. Yes, we had a mindset to come start the game as on our toes, you know, like goes pressure all weekend because we had the whole week to, to train and get back and uh, I think it worked out. Okay, a quick look at the standings right now. Starting in the East, Florida, a healthy lead over second place, Baltimore, followed by Utica and the Harrisburg Heats. In the Central, Kansas City, eight-point bulge over second place, Dallas, and uh, they are followed by St. Louis and the Milwaukee Wave. And then finally in the West, San Diego looking uh, utterly unstoppable right now, followed by Ontario, Chihuahua, and the Tacoma Stars. Okay, primetime players of the week, and your offensive player is Letzia Thetsani of the Kansas City Comets. Seven points in two games for the Comets, and Thetsani actually a defender, putting up some nice offensive numbers, though. And your defensive player of the week is Uzi Tayu, brother of Frank, and he pulls in the defensive award, and he had a fantastic week. Seven blocks in two games for the Fury. Uzi, definitely one of the best defensive players in the league. Plays of the week now. Lady at the back post. One way to do it. 
to the Pardo. Giles shed his man. Great pass. Cerda scores! Que golazo tan fuerte! Save our Cerda! Three goals. So they've been in close games. There's Jamie Thomas with a shot. And a goal! The stalwart for many seasons away, but it comes back! Shot and a goal! King runner. It's Chihuahua. See the shot go high, oh. and the rebound is put in. Here come the sidekicks. Picking it up there. It's Morales, and Morales shoots. The field, and that's allowing for runners to be able to come through. Shot Ooh. and a goal. Jorge De Leon picks one up from Gonsalves. And that hit a body in front. It ended up staying out. It turned just to the left. Williamson shoots and scores. The floor. Nature of the beast. Frank Tayu spins, fires, and what a goal! Frank Tayu. And band scheme that has come here with the end. Oh! <laughs> Pepe! We're tied in two! Wish to Daduka up top. Almeida gets big, fires a left footed shot, Mustafa! Cell days. I think <laughs> probably needs to be a little more than that. Another one by the Comets. And DeRios hustles in the corner. See if he can make something of it. Morales with a shot and the score. Luis Morales, the bandit, makes it even. Dallas sidekicks two to two versus the Kansas City Comets. Wow, wow. And that is going to wrap up this episode of Primetime. But just a reminder, all throughout the regular season and the playoffs, your stop for all things MASL. All the latest news, statistics, and highlights are the league's official social media outlets. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week.